Okay, this is a video on how to test batteries with a multimeter. Um, this all started when I was trying to operate a DVD player and I wasn't sure if I had the right remote. The DVD player was my father-in-law's and it was something that we ended up with and we also had a lot of remotes box of remotes or remotes all over the house and um, we couldn't get the DVD player to play with a remote. This is the remote that I thought was the correct remote but wouldn't play with it and when I looked at the batteries that were in it because the first thing I thought many of the batteries were bad uh, the batteries said Sony just like the uh, remote so they looked like the original batteries. I tested the batteries with my uh, voltmeter, which I was accustomed to doing, and they read 1.5 volts, which they're reading right now. I thought the batteries were okay, because normally I had used my voltmeter to test batteries, and if they were 1.5, I would say they were okay. If they were 1.4 or 1.3, then I might throw them away, or I might just use them for something that wasn't critical, like maybe a flashlight, and they might be dim, but they might still work. But in this case, I assumed that the reason that I couldn't get the DVD player to work was maybe it wasn't the right remote. I tried bringing a remote really close to the DVD, DVD player, and still I couldn't get anything with it. So we used the DVD player without the remote for quite a while, but there were a lot of functions we couldn't use. Um, finally, I did try putting in some other batteries. I went with these uh, rechargeable batteries. I've been using these. These are nickel metal hydride and they're 1.2 volts. Well, as soon as I put them in, the uh, DVD player stopped, started working. And I realized that these batteries really weren't any good, even though they were reading 1.5 volts. And then it kind of dawned on me that they uh, were used up, but they were still reading 1.5 volts. And I realized after doing a little reading that they do make um, battery testers that have a load resistance built into it. And that's a way to test the battery under load, which is a better test. I picked up this amp probe meter, which um, only cost $8. It's very cheap, but it looks like it's well made. And uh, I've used this brand before and I was very happy with it. Um, but after using it for a while, I, I realized that it wasn't ideal either. Um, I, I, I checked, the reason was is because I, I wanted to use it for testing some button batteries, also 1.5 volts. And when I checked the review online on Amazon for this more carefully, I did find one reviewer who did a comparison of 13 different battery testers compared and, and, and comparing them all to each other and the BAT-250. And he pointed out that the BAT-250 only uses one load resistance for all of the different battery types. So it's using four ohms of load resistance even on the battery, the button battery, and with 1.5 volts, the four ohm resistance will draw 375 milliamps. And um, one of the reviewers of this um, BAT250 mentioned how when he was testing the button cells, these button batteries with it, he could, they could be good, but he could actually see the, um, voltage just dropping as he was testing it. The load is quite large. Um, this unit is going to use the exact same load for this cell and this cell. Doesn't seem like it's fair. Uh, other battery testers, in fact the battery tester that, that came out number one on this test here was the Gardner Bender GBT500A. It's 
listed here as $8 to $12. Um, it has three different load resistances that it uses. Different, it uses a 10 ohm resistor for, this, for the AAA setting. It uses a 30 ohm resistor for the AA setting. And it uses a 1.5K resistor for the button cell. So on the button cell, the current draw is only one milliamp on the Gardner bender, but it's 350 milliamps on this. So uh, then I, I kind of realized that to test my button cells, I didn't really want to be using uh, this battery tester, but this battery tester is, is fine for these uh, other larger cells. So let me just show you uh, an example of what happens here with one of these um, batteries. I've already tested one of them. Let's say and I was able to get 1.5 volts on one of them. This one here is measuring 1.5 volts. But if I, if I test it on, on this device, it's completely uh, in the red, as low as it can, it can go. It's very, uh, it's actually extremely weak, even though it has 1.5 volts. Okay, it still has 1.5 volts on it, even though I did just test it now. I realized that to test my button batteries, I really want to use a different load resistance instead of the four ohms. So I took a look at resistors that I have. Um, I have some resistors that I have a collection that I've used before. I'm an electrical engineer, but I wasn't really that good at testing batteries until this um, particular incident came up. I wanted to get a, a load resistance about 10 ohms or 30 ohms <coughs> to test the double A or triple A cells. Uh, the lowest one I had was 100 ohms, but I had five of them, so I put them in parallel to make a 20 ohm load. And then I had a, a 1K resistor, which is a, probably a good one. It's not 1.5K, but it's still in the range of what would be a very a much lighter load for the button battery, 10 times lighter than on this. So, for example, if I measure the... Um, so let me show you how you can use, if you have some jumper clips. You do need some equipment in order to test batteries without using a special battery meter. You, you need some jumper clips, you need the resistor. So um, the advantage is you don't need to buy a separate battery tester and your test is actually gonna be somewhat more accurate because you're using a meter on your voltmeter, you're not using a meter, a cheap meter on the battery tester. Of course, it's not critical sort of test. So here's an example where I've got the five um, resistors in parallel. That's 20 ohm. So that's that's a 20 ohm load. Now, if I take the 20 ohm load, let me pick up one of these batteries again. If I measure it without the load, which I've already done a couple times here. Of scale. Oh, it's 1.5. Okay. Now, just by putting this jumper clip onto my probe, it's now got a 20 ohm load. And that's going to draw more current. Now you can see it, it's all the way to zero. In other words, Oh, I'm sorry, 200 millivolts, 220 millivolts. Uh, so it's a definite fail. It, it, the, the, the device, the pass level on these testers is at about a volt. If it can generate more than a volt, the piece of equipment that it's running will probably work fine. So for example, in this, this has cells in it that are at best, that even they're new, the 1.2 volts. So um, this is, working fine with that. Um, 
So this shows you how to do that. Now this load will work fine for a D-cell. It turns out that if I disconnect the load I, like this, uh, if I just connect one side of it and I test a battery, let's say without a load, like here's an example of a D-cell. The old way of testing I would use without the load. Now, here's an example of a D-cell that's only producing 800 millivolts. This is already a fail even without the load, so this is definitely dead. Here's a C-cell. I don't know how old this one is. It doesn't have a date on it. I'm not even sure where it came from. It's reading 1.52 volts, okay, without the load, so it might be okay. Now, if I put the load on it, it's only reading 74 millivolts. So this is an, another example of one that's reading 1.5 volts, but it's really completely used up. It has very high series resistance. So if you try drawing any current from it, then um, it's not gonna work very good. Okay, now let's try using, uh, here's a AAA, a AAA cell. Just as, just as an example, you can, once you have it set up, you can test all your batteries and find out which ones to throw away. This one is reading 1.3 volts. Well, in the past, I would have discarded this, probably. Okay, but now I can test it with a load. It might actually be okay. Okay, it's 1.1. It's, it's on the borderline, but it's, it's still okay. It'll probably still work for a while. It's probably not completely used up. It says super alkaline. So some of these are hard to read. Now let's try the button cell. Now for the button cell, I could use this 20 ohms, but I'm gonna use uh, 1K ohm, 1.1K ohm here. Okay. First, I'll put it on ohms just to double check. I have a good connection, 1.15, okay? These are actually 1% resistors, so it's quite accurate. Uh, I'll measure the button cell. In this case, I'll do it slightly different because it's harder to hold. I can get the two terminals with it put down. That's 1.2 volts, so that's pretty marginal. Uh, these are silver oxide cells. Uh, I looked them up on the computer and said they should be 1.5 volts. So that's 1.2. It's kind of low. Now I'll load it with 1K, which is going to be slightly more than a milliamp, like one and a half milliamps or so, which is maybe a reasonable load. It's still coming out at 1.2 volts. You don't have to worry about the negative. That's really just because the probes are hooked up. If you hook them up one way, you'll get the positive number. The other way, you get the negative number. It's 1.2, so there no, wasn't that much of a drop, actually. Even though the initial voltage was lower, it's still producing 1.2 volts, so this button cell should probably still work. Um, I, I did have something I was using it in, and I wasn't sure if the device was broken or if it was the batteries. I didn't have new ones to try out. If I had some new ones, I definitely have tried the new ones. Uh, without that, these ones probably still should be okay. Anyway, so this is just gives you a little idea of how you can use voltmeter along with resistors to get a reasonable load. The um, batteries, <clears throat> if you look up their spec online, it, it'll tell you how much current they are supposed to put out, but the uh, another thing to do is just to check that battery tester, the Gartner Bender, it was using 10 ohms for the larger batteries. It was using uh, 30 ohms for the smaller batteries. It was using 1.5K on the button cells. Okay, thanks.